So now you've probably learned more than you ever wanted to know about diodes and how we take semiconductors and uh, we form a diode out of the junction between two differently doped semiconductor materials. Um, while that's interesting and the physics behind how um, diodes and semiconductor junctions work is important to understand, at least have uh, some understanding of how that happens, uh, what we're really interested in in this class is how we can model the behavior of, um, of a diode, for instance. And the diode itself behaves simply as a voltage-controlled switch that allows current to flow in one direction. So we know all of the wonderful physics now that uh, go behind the semiconductor PN junction diode, but ultimately we just want to know how we can uh, use this. So we're going to develop these abstraction models, and you've seen this mo these models before, we just didn't explicitly state that they were abstraction models. So remember that an abstraction model is just a model that we use that may not capture all of the physics of what's happening in the system, um, but it allows us to at least capture the electronic um, behavior of the, uh, of the diode in this case. And we actually have two possible models that we can use for a diode abstraction model. One is the nonlinear model. And you have seen this from your measurements in lab where the diode, we're going to, we could replace that diode with this current controlled, excuse me, this voltage controlled current source. All right, and this voltage controlled current source is going to depend upon um, how much potential is placed across the diode from the anode to the cathode. All right, and we saw that um, in lab, as we increase the potential across the anode to the cathode, the current through the diode increased exponentially. And this is the way that we can model this nonlinearly. Unfortunately, nonlinear models are very difficult to work with and um, are, not, uh, are not good for approximating the behavior. Um, we, it, they're great when we uh, have the tools available to um, actually perform this analysis right here, um, but uh, it can uh, it can be a bit cumbersome if we just want to um, take a cursory look at the system and see how it behaves. So the other thing that we've already talked about is this discontinuous linear model. So instead of worrying about this exponential behavior, what we do is we just pretend that when we exceed the built-in diode voltage, that this is just going to act like a wire. In other words, it's going to allow an infinite amount of current to pass through it. All right, that doesn't mean that an infinite amount of current does pass through it. It just means that the resistance between the two points here is essentially zero um, when the voltage across these two points exceeds the diode voltage. And when it does not exceed the diode voltage, there's no current, so it acts like an open circuit. All right, and so that's the simple abstraction model, um, this discontinuous linear model that we use. Essentially, we say that the diode acts like a switch that uh, has a potential drop across it. And if that potential, that potential drop is going to be the diode voltage, and the switch is going to be closed if um, the potential across the diode exceeds the diode voltage VD. So this is a simplified way to look at it, and essentially um, this is the way that uh, we are going to look at it in this class, even though we have all the fancy uh, quantum mechanics understanding of how band gaps and semiconductor junctions work now. Um, this abstraction model provides us with the tools to easily work with this uh, uh, PN junction diode.